Welcome everyone to the second episode of uh, Data Architecture Elevato Espresso. Uh, I'm Antonio, I will be your host today. And uh, today we will talk about uh, platform engineering with our dear guest, uh, Andrea Novak. So let's uh, set the topic uh, at first. What is uh, platform engineering? It's a buzzword, we hear it uh, every day almost on LinkedIn or other uh, work-related social media, but how does it differ from DevOps or site reliability engineering, which are practices that we've seen in the last uh, 10 years take probably the, the same space? Hi, Antonio, everyone. Uh, so very, very interesting question. Uh, I'd say that first, uh, before talking about platform engineering, we should first uh, talk a little bit about what a platform is so you can we can understand better the, the context. Uh, at first sight, uh, you may say that a platform is a bunch of technology that are put together, and for sure this is part uh, of the, the, the picture. But uh, technologies offer just basic capabilities. I mean, uh, if you talk about uh, Spark, uh, Spark enables you to uh, transform data and, uh, and uh, elaborate data. If you talk, uh, talk about a SQL database, whatever it is, Postgres, SQL Server, whatever, it enables you to, to manage structured data. If you talk about uh, Kafka, it lets you stream uh, arrays of bytes. So technologies gives you the, the building uh, blocks uh, of uh, what a platform is, but the, a platform is much more than the sum of technologies on it. So it is uh, a set of technologies uh, which is properly uh, integrated, properly combined, composed together to do what? To, f to, to fulfill the needs of, a, of an organization. So our, our concept of platform that we uh, evangelize outside the Agile Lab uh, is that a platform is uh, uh, something that should be tailored uh, on the needs of a specific organization. And how this tailoring happens? Um, the integration can be done in thousands of ways, for sure, because if you have some technologies, you can integrate them in very different ways. Uh, the driver is uh, what you have to do, uh, what are your goals uh, with that platform. And uh, so when you integrate a platform, you always keep uh, uh, an eye on the, on the goals of the organization. Uh, so a properly integrated platform is uh, a platform that uh, has chosen the, the right technologies for the organization and integrated them uh, in, in the proper way. What, what is uh, uh, integration of technologies? Uh, there are well, a lot of things, but basically uh, I would say uh, two things. Uh, the first one is integration with the, the technologies and the environment. For example, the, the cloud provider you choose, the, the, the specific products you choose, uh, so that the platform can do a lot of things for you, uh, easing your everyday job. For example, can do provisioning of resources, can do creation of uh, uh, access grants uh, or uh, ac technical accounts, uh, human accounts, all these kind of things. And on the other side, creating also uh, what we call templates, so uh, composable objects that can ease uh, the work of uh, data engineers or uh, in, in any case, and also data scientists perhaps, but anyone who is in charge of creating, uh, uh, of, of adding value on top of the platform. So creating projects uh, on data on top of the platform. Because when you do a project, uh, you can start, of course, Greenfield, uh, and that's, uh, that's feasible, but if you start Greenfields and two projects start Greenfields uh, on the, at the same moment, uh, in the end, you'll have uh, very different deliverables with different standards of qualities, with different practices uh, in them. And uh, in the end, you can have uh, an elapsed of the project, which is much longer than could have been if you have used some help from the, the platform, from the, the foundation that is uh, the, the development cycle. So. The integration of the platform is about integrating the technologies, but also embedding all the best practices in terms of temp the reusable templates, modular templates that engineers can use to create projects on top of the platform. And in, in, this, in this way, I think that uh, the, a platform is much different from, uh, from uh, uh, and, and platform engineering is much different from other practices. So if we define pra uh, that, um, sorry, platform engineering as uh, the, the art and craft of designing and implementing a platform as we describe it, uh, 
you can see that platform engineering is mainly um, a, a product oriented kind of activity. So the, the main difference between, for example, platform engineering and uh, DevOps or site reliability uh, is uh, that you, you don't just uh, uh, keep the light on, let's say. So you ju just don't keep uh, all the infrastructure running, but uh, you develop something new. You develop uh, uh, the, the platform and embed in the platform all the best practice and the added value that is needed to help uh, data engineers and uh, AI engineers, uh, analysts, uh, and also business users uh, have uh, an easier path from their starting point to their, their goals. Yeah, so can we say that um, platform engineering is more uh, product oriented uh, than, than DevOps or site reliability engineering and that to implement a good platform, even if it's uh, only an internal product, uh, you need, uh, let's say, uh, user empathy. So you need to understand what's going to be the user journey what is the user journey today without a platform and and plan and work uh, accordingly absolutely that couldn't be more true uh, when you develop a platform uh, you have for sure to interact with a, a platform owner so someone which is in charge of deciding what features and in which order features are going into the platform and uh, the product owner usually uh, has to listen to the community of users to decide how to plan the development of, uh, of a platform. A platform, you can imagine, is a, a huge object in, in its uh, um, overall uh, uh, perimeter that can be delivered as a big bang. A platform is, uh, by its own nature, something that evolves in time. And evolves in time because you have to prioritize uh, features that you want to add to the, the platform uh, according to the features that are needed by the data project that should be developed on top of the platform. For example, we have seen uh, scenarios where the first release of the platform after, let's say, six months of development uh, and integration was able to manage uh, batch use cases. So loading data from some uh, files or, or uh, structured data sources and manage them as batches. And then the need for uh, streaming or near real-time use cases uh, arise. And so you come back and decide to plan more features, for example, to interact with, uh, with, uh, with Kafka or to, to have support for Spark Streaming or, or Flink. And you Im implement that kind of integration and that kind of use case templates. So an engineer from the version 2.0 of the platform can use also templates for doing streaming in its own pro data products. So it's something that still uh, continuously evolve. And of course, uh, one of the most important things uh, a platform team should never forget to do is listening to the user base, which may happen in terms of uh, tickets to the support that are, are being uh, opened or mail received or chat or whatever. But if you don't get feedback from the community, you can never know if uh, what you are implementing is right. What we also encourage as a best practice is that uh, um, engineers that are part of the platform team spend some time as data product engineers working on the same platform that they have implemented, because in this way, you have the opportunity to use uh, in a real context, uh, what you have developed. So the use case template, the integration, uh, to, to check if actually uh, the components that you provide to, to the community and the way that the platform interacts uh, in, 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 in complex is something that can be used easily and effectively to deliver data project uh, uh, projects. Or you may find that there are some uh, shortcomings, some, some defects, some uh, things that are not so, not so intuitive as you, uh, the platform team thought when designed them and implemented them. So it's a, a good practice to have, a, let's say, a sabbatical semester implementing data products outside of the platform to better understand how the platform really looks in the eyes of an end user. Yeah, actually, I found it um, particularly interesting, this, uh, this part and, let's say, methodology, which but it's also known as uh, dog uh, dog fooding, right, uh, in, in the software community. And uh, I felt it was necessary when, um, uh, well, in my 
in my career, I was moved from a data engineering uh, team that was implementing use cases in the platform to the platform team. Uh, where in, at first I was able to point out all the blind spots that my now um, team uh, team members and collaborators couldn't see because they weren't using the platform, but they, they were building it. Uh, even if you get feedback, uh, the best feedback you, you can get is uh, is from, from yourself. Oh, yeah. And, uh, so uh, what we started doing then was to implement data use cases about uh, the platform itself. So we used our own tools to track uh, the number of uh, batch uh, uh, jobs run every day, the, run, uh, the number of data set, the number of governance policies, and we built them using our own platform. And, and that obviously, uh, that does uh, a lot because we, we could see what we were uh, we were doing wrong. Obviously, we, we are talking about data platforms mainly because that that's our job. But uh, I guess you can uh, get let's say the same kind of insights also about any other kind of uh, of platform it can be a service platform or or whatever kind of platform. So the key anyway is that platform uh, can uh, help scale a practice while uh, probably uh, DevOps or site reliability engineering are good practices, but uh, do not scale um, very well because you need a lot of dissemination. Building a platform can build those practices into the platform itself. I think that that's, that's the gist. So, um, do well we are definitely biased because agile lab also develops a, a, a product to implement uh, data platforms but um, can you name some uh, other technology other than with boost uh, that can be used to implement uh, a data platform well, there is the the the, the platform from uh, from Netflix uh, uh, backstage, for example, uh, that you can um, for sure start for building a platform. Um, and I, I would like to also to highlight one, another another point that I, I somehow missed uh, before. Uh, in our idea, a platform is something that is not uh, that, that does not come as a whole platform out of the box uh, from a single vendor. So uh, we would like to. Also, um, we, we encourage our customers uh, thinking outside of those boxes because, uh, for sure, in, in those boxes, I, I, I think that's uh, you, you know what I mean. They are very, uh, very vast, include a lot of uh, options for doing data processing. But in the end, uh, you are forced uh, to use uh, only what is uh, on the menu, let's say. While when you really build the platform for yourself, uh, you choose the technologies and then uh, implement the, the proper integration of those technologies. This is done for a, a lot of reasons. First uh, is, of course, having a, a platform that is tailored on your needs. Another one could be avoiding uh, as much as possible uh, lock-in, lock-in from, from technologies. But I, I'd say that the, the worst lock-in is the lock-in from services. If you use uh, services from, from a provider, uh, it, it, the problem is that you are locked uh, on, on that provider and when you try to move away, you have an, a harder time than just uh, moving uh, uh, the same technology outside of that provider to another one or even on-prem, whatever it is, uh, because you, you are free to move your data. So we, we encourage using, uh, for example, open standard. We, we love very much um, Iceberg as a uh, a data table format uh, for, for encoding data because you can move iceberg files uh, wherever you want and reuse it also for different tasks. You, you can use, for example, Dremio on top of it uh, to analyze data in a, in a SQL-like uh, way. Dremio is a, a technology that uh, helps you virtualize a lot of sources, including uh, uh, data coming from, from uh, file formats like, like Iceberg or, or even Parquet or Delta Lake. 
And uh, you can also consume iceberg tables uh, uh, directly if you want to use, for example, uh, you, data for training models uh, in, uh, in AI or doing some other model um, training for, for whatever, whatever it is. So uh, it, our, our idea is that the platform is something which is open and is composed one single component at a time because you decided that was the, the right fit for your needs and your purpose. Yeah, so uh, probably to sum it up, we can say that uh, uh, well, technologies come and go, but your processes and practices uh, should stay. So uh, you should build a platform to keep the practices in place and automatically, let's say, uh, develop uh, centrally the glue to bridge your practices and processes to the tools you have today. But obviously, as you said, you're going to evolve your platform and maybe change the tools uh, uh, beneath your platform without changing the processes or the practices that, exactly. that you introduce. That's a very important point that you, you focused, Antonio, because if, if the platform is not able to abstract from a specific technology up to the concept, uh, the platform is missing an opportunity to making make it itself stronger. For example, if you use GCS because you are on Google Cloud for the storage, you don't have to speak in terms of GCS as a storage. You have to speak in terms of buckets. So when you move on S3 on AWS, for example, or whatever it is on, on Azure, you can just re replace the, the template from the platform and always uh, everything will, will keep working fine because you, you thought in terms of buckets so and that's just for storage but it uh, every technology should be abstracted by by the platform as much as possible to avoid lock-in very very nice um, uh, insight so i think that uh, that's it for today so um Thank you very much, Andrea, for uh, um, being here and uh, giving your insights. See you ne next week with a new episode of Data Engineering Elevator Espresso.